Hi everybody, thanks for joining me. My name's Roz, I direct Sheffield Harmony Chorus and I sing bass in Nightfall Quartet. The RNT have asked me to run this edu education session on vocal warm-ups. So let's start with the purpose of a vocal warm-up. As an individual, it's really important to make sure that our voices are in tip-top shape and ready to sing for the duration of our rehearsal or a performance. You wouldn't expect a marathon runner to join a race without doing some stretching first and warming up the muscles, and the voice is no different. So we need to make sure that we're preparing it in the most healthy way pos possible. In an ensemble, a warm-up can serve other functions as well. So it helps us engage our ears and tune in with fellow singers. It helps us engage our brain, establishes a connection with the chorus director and makes sure that we know exactly what they're asking of us. It can also be used for skill building. Directors will often weave in craft into a warm up or maybe use an exercise that they know is going to help with something later on in the rehearsal. In my experience, chorus and quartet warm ups can be quite different. So in my ladies quartet nightfall, we will always warm up together. We will sing exactly the same exercises, whether I'm a bass or Emma as a tenor. Um, and quite often we find that exercising the other part of our range normally helps with the notes that we're singing anyway. So Emma always likes to warm up her lower range before going up to the high notes. We will normally try and do exactly the same exercises each time we sing together. So we actually follow a warm up CD and this saves with a bit of faff working out who's going to run which exercise this time. Um, and it also makes sure that our voices are always in the same starting place every time we sing together. We always finish with a unifying exercise to get us locked into our unit sound. And that's coming across both my quartets. So my mixed quartet scandal, we have quite different needs when it comes to warming up. As you might imagine, um, with men and women singing together, our voices can um, behave quite differently sometimes. So we tend to do an individual warm up, but then we still finish with those unifying exercises like the one that I mentioned Nightfall do. In a chorus setting, I can imagine my members would absolutely hate me if I did exactly the same warm up every week. Can you imagine? So I try to make that a bit more varied and, and fun, introduce lots of different exercises. And also, as I said before, it really does set the tone for what you are trying to achieve during a rehearsal. So you want your singers to be engaged and energetic, not totally bored by what you're doing because you do the same every time. There are various key elements to an effective vocal warm-up. I've been to all sorts of education sessions where they've tried to come up with a definitive list. So here are just two examples. As you can see, uh, one is quite a bit longer than the other, but I think that they would all agree that there are some common elements there. And I'm sure Joan and Dale would say that a lot of Rob's points are encompassed in their five. So it's quite nice to see the commonality there. For me, it boils down to this simple concept of start small and get big. So when it comes to actually creating the sound for a nation, um, we start with lower impact exercises like bubbling or humming or semi-included vocal tract exercises. And I know Alison's going to talk to you about those in the next session on PBIs before we move up to singing a full song, um, which is a more high impact um, exercise. We'll similarly start with a small range, just uh, working around one or one or two notes um, before expanding. And normally we'll start in the middle of our range and working that before we stretch out to the extremities. Similarly, um, with the intervals that we're singing, we'll normally move by step at first before we move on to larger jumps. And then it's exactly the same when it comes to harmony. So we normally start out singing all on the same part and then we'll gradually build up to adding more harmony parts until we're ready for our four part barbershop. So the first thing I wanted to talk to you about is alignment. Now I know Norma's just done a physical warm up with us, which was excellent. From a chorus director's perspective, I'm, I'm really keen on alignment. I mean, I I'm, will hold my hands up that I'm a 100% subscriber to how important alignment is for good singing. But as a chorus director, it's really important to acknowledge that there's no one size fits all remedy. Each 
singer will need different adjustments to their feet, their knees, their hips, their pelvis, their shoulders, their neck, their ears, their head. So it's very difficult um, to treat all of them the same way, for example, saying, keep your shoulders back. Well, there might be a singer who already has their shoulders too far back. So you don't want them to make it worse by these kind of blanket explanations. So I think it's really important in chorus or quartet to spend some time individually, one-to-one -one with people on their alignment. And from then you can simplify it to some overall concepts that you use as reminders in chorus rehearsals. I like to keep it simple with these three options. So I hope you'll join in with me. First of all, stand like a superhero. So as you can see, I've got my shoulders back, chest thrusts forward, and that my lower back is in agony trying to keep that position. So not the best alignment really there. And next, as a contrast, moody teenager. So this is really slouchy, very low energy. My, my lungs are completely collapsed because I'm hunched over. Again, not very good for singing. So finally, I'd like you to imagine that you are at Sweet Adeline's International and you've just won the quartet contest to become a queen of harmony. So they're just about to place that Sweet Adeline's crown on your head. Did you feel how you instantly got two inches taller? So you naturally bring everything into alignment when you're thinking about wearing a crown. Your neck is nice and long, elongated. Um, your head is nice and level, we wouldn't want that crown slipping off, would we? And we just have this overall attitude of kind of this regal, noble stance. Um, and I find this a really useful reminder throughout my chorus rehearsals. As a director, I can just, if my singers know what it means, I can just remind them of their crowns and they'll automatically adjust and pull everything into this alignment. It's much easier having that one reminder rather than eight different things to remember. So next, I've got a range of different um, exercises and I thought it would be worth us going through um, just some examples of the kinds of things that I use in my rehearsals. I hope you'll join in with me, as I said. And on each of these pages, I've written down which of those initial categories um, we, we tick off with these exercises. So first of all, one that ticks quite a few, and it's a great um, starter, and one that I know the youth chorus have used quite a lot. So first of all, imagine that you're, it's first thing in the morning and you're nice and deeply asleep. So you're going to take some totally relaxed, deep breaths. Feel that rib cage expansion as you breathe in and utterly relaxed belly as well. No tension whatsoever. Great. So as you're starting to stir, you might make some little murmurings as you're breathing as well. So, Good. And then we'll wake up fully and we'll have a big stretch and yawn. Make sure you're really stretching out your mouth there. Very good. Excellent. Now it's time for our shower. What sound does the water make? Excellent. Time to dry off with a quick towel rub. And finally, we're going to brush our teeth and we have an electric toothbrush. What noise does that make? Make sure you're getting into all those crevices all the way around your mouth. Use your tongue if you need to, to access all of them. Nice job, well done. Speaking is um, the next step in our low impact phonation. So let's give this one a try. Repeat after me. I have a lollipop. A red and yellow lollipop. I have a lollipop. Pop, pop, pop. Okay, you get the idea, so join in now. Do you have a lollipop? 
A red and yellow lollipop. Do you have a lollipop? Pop, pop, pop. No, I don't have a lollipop. A red and yellow lollipop. I don't have a lollipop. Pop, pop, pop. Would you like a lollipop? A red and yellow lollipop. Would you like a lollipop? Pop, pop, pop. Yes, I would like a lollipop. A red and yellow lollipop. I would like a lollipop. Pop, pop, pop. Well, you can't have a lollipop. A red and yellow lollipop. You can't have a lollipop. Pop, pop, pop. So that's a really fun one for engaging our faces and bringing some emotion and different vocal character into what we're saying as well. These next two are fairly self-explanatory and um, do exactly what it says on the tin. So join in with me. If you need to take another breath, take it in the middle of a long note. If you need to take another breath, Breath, take it in the middle of a long note. If you need to take another breath, breath, take it in the middle of a long note. Okay, nice job. And the next one. If you need to take another breath and you can miss out a syllable or two. If you need to take another breath and you can miss out a syllable or two. If Take another breath and you can miss out a syllable or two. If you need to take another, miss out a syllable or two. With that one, I would advise mouthing along as you breathe in so that it helps you keep time and also doesn't make it too obvious that you've stopped singing. So they're great for staggering breaths, breaths in all of your chorus songs. This next one is an absolute favourite of mine and I never feel like I've probably properly stretched out my voice until I've done it. But a word of warning, it's quite loud and you'll sound very silly. So the sounds are V E E E V E E V E E V E E Okay, next up we're gonna direct that um, sound like a laser beam. Um, in a chorus I like to do this in a circle so you can point it at someone um, opposite you in the circle and it goes like this. Okay, next, um, we're gonna add a bit of width to that sound and imagine it reaching both walls. <clears throat> nice job. And then finally, we'll add a bit of height to the sound. Some people refer to this as their opera singer voice or adding some yawn quality, maybe. <laughs> Hopefully you feel like that's giving you a good stretch. So it's uh, just about time to have a quick um, alignment check. We're gonna make sure there's absolutely no tension in our bodies. So first of all, to achieve this, I'd like everyone to look up at the ceiling and grin as hard as you can for about five seconds. Join in with me. Now you're gonna leave your cheeks nice and lifted and just let your jaw relax and hang down. And then come back down into singing position. Hopefully your jaw is nice and loose. There we go. That's really going to help us with this next low exercise. So the sounds here are yaya and baba, and it goes like this. And you can work down in semi -jones. Now this one is really important that we don't over articulate. So not too much jaw movement, or as I like to say, no muppetry. Otherwise you get a really choppy sound like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's just not as nice, is it? So nice and smooth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ba, 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 ba. And you keep going as low as your basses can handle it. Okay, this, this time we're going to work upwards, and as I promised, we're expanding the range a bit as well. So, this is quite um, a broad um, exercise here. So, it works on the sound ER, and it goes like this. 
So, as I said, it is quite wide, um, don't start it too low, okay? So this one you're going to work up in semitones, and let's do one a bit higher. Nice job. We can also layer onto this um, harnessing different emotions. So let's start with a nice somber sound. Did you hear how that was a bit gentler and maybe slower as well? And then we'll, we can contrast this with a nice happy sound. You can also move on to the extremes of those emotions. So um, mournful is one of my favourites. And try and make uh, your voice do a bit of a cry on each of those crests. Let's try this. Extra points if you make yourself join in facially as well. Finally, let's uh, end on a happy note with a jubilant sound. This one might feel a bit free and bouncy. As I say, you can um, layer on different emotions or you can just use it to access that upper range and keep working up a semitone at a time. So then it's time to move on to harmony exercises. I like to use um, the scale as the basis of this and just some basic vowel sounds. Um, my chorus don't like remembering too many words. So we use the scale a lot and we often go on a bus ride together. So the idea is that you start off together and then um, different sections will get off the bus at different times and they might get collected on the way back. Lilu is a variant of this and it works with everyone going up the scale and then the tenors starting at the top so um so bass is completed so the idea is that the um leads and the baritones in the middle they'll get off if you're counting up from one to eight at the top um, then on the way back down, the leads will get off at stop six and the baritones will get off at four, basses will complete the full journey and then the leads and baritones need to listen out for the basses when they make that final move and um, leads and barriers take a little step down as well. Tenors just continue hold, holding where you are. So this is what it sounds like when you put it all together. And then finally, I promise to tell you the unifying exercise that both of my quartets do to end their warm ups. We find this one really useful um, because it kind of ticks all the boxes. It helps us unify our vowel sounds, our um, synchronization, our tuning, our resonance, it works all of those things. So you're making the sound hungi. So on the hun, your tongue is going up to the roof of your mouth and then as you turn that hard g sound, um, you'll try and keep your tongue up there as much as possible and what that does is it just lifts your soft palate and hopefully creates this nice ringy space. So again it works on the, um, on the scale and we split into two parts. So the tenors and the leads will start right at the top on the eight um, and they will work their way down to the five and then they'll stay there. 
spaces and barriers will start on the five while the tenor and lead are coming down to join them. And then as soon as they've got a unison, tenor and lead stay there and the bass and barry finish the octave. So the individual parts, tenor and lead. and Barry will start there on the five. And here's what it sounds like put together. to make sure that you're tuning into your quartet mates and really picking up on the physical cues as well, especially from your lead, to make sure that you're synchronising together. So my quartets tend to sing this in a square and we'll have lead and tenor facing each other and bass and baritone facing each other so we can really hone in on that. Once we've done the E, we'll then work through all the other vowel sounds um, and this is normally in the order of E, E, R, R, O, U. As you say each of those, you'll probably be able to work out why we do it in that order. You'll feel the sound going back in your mouth. Otherwise, you can do it the opposite way, U, O, R, E, E, and you'll feel that sound coming further forward. So we'll do the whole exercise on a hungi, and then a whole exercise on a hunge, hunga, hungo, hungu. And that really helps us find our unit sound. So there you have it, that's a full warm up from me. Um, I hope it's given you some ideas and things that you can use in your own rehearsals. If you have any questions, um, please feel free to contact me. My email address is on there and enjoy the rest of the sessions. Take care, everyone. <laughs>